Hello everyone. My name is Marko Hotti and I'm Senior Technical Product Manager for SQL Server. And here in the studio I have Bill Ramos. Hi hey, Bill. Hey Marco, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Doing good, thanks. So let's jump into uh, this course here. What we're going to do is cover the similarities of SQL Server and Oracle, then drop into an overview of the features of SQL Server 2016, and follow that up with a review of the real-time operational analytics capabilities. We'll then go into stretch database, followed by temporal tables, and then talk about some of the new uh, analytics, advanced analytics capabilities with our services. So Bill, um, SQL Server and Oracle have been around for quite a while, and uh, both of the database technologies, they have evolved a lot. In the end of the day, it seems like there are not so many differences between these two guys. Yeah, you're right, Marco. And uh, it turns out that uh, with database technologies, there are a, little, a lot of similarities. So with SQL Server, for example, there's this notion of an instance, and that's a version of the engine running um, on a computer. A server can have multiple instances of SQL Server running on them. Oracle has a similar notion of an instance uh, in that um, you can go ahead and define the instance. Uh, typically, you don't have more than one instance on the server, um, but it allows you, it's, it's kind of the thing that holds your, your databases there. Now, in terms of databases, SQL has always had this notion of multiple databases uh, per instance. And that allows you to be able to move databases between instances very easily. Whereas with Oracle, uh, prior to 12C, a database and an instance were linked together, right? And so, you know, if you wanted to move a database between instances, you pretty much picked up the whole thing and ran with it. Now with Oracle 12C, they introduced this notion of pluggable databases and contained database that holds these pluggable databases. And that gives you a, a capability very similar to what SQL Server has. Uh, both databases have this notion of a schema, and a schema is a collection of objects that are contained within the database. And then uh, Oracle has this very similar notion. There's some little differences there. Uh, Marco, you have some ideas, kind of the, the differences between the um, Oracle schema and the SQL schema and how they're different there? Yeah, well, um, I guess uh, traditionally Oracle DBAs consider schema being the database, right? Right. And whereas in SQL Server, we have a, the database and in database we have uh, several schemas. So, so it's a little bit different concept, but basically the idea is the same. Right. And that changes now with uh, Oracle uh, 12C and the pluggable databases is that now you can, you can still have those multiple schemas within the database. Um, but now you don't have to do the schema separation. You can actually separate by databases, and that's the, the trend that Oracle is heading towards there. I have one comment about the concept of instance and database. So yeah. in SQL Server, DBAs typically install at least the default instance, mm -hmm. uh, and you call that uh, instance um, using the server name, right? Right, right. And then you have named instances. Uh, Oracle doesn't have that. No, Oracle doesn't have this notion of a named instance. Um, basically, it's the one thing, and then now you have the ability to have multiple databases right. um, uh, within that mm -hmm. um, server, or within that uh, contained database. Okay, so how do the, the, the concept of user or login? Yeah, so with um, SQL Server, you have this notion of a login at the server level, and then you have, at the database level, you have users there. Um, with an Oracle database, you essentially have a user for that database, and that's how you go ahead and establish your connection there. Um, and so uh, it's very similar to right now with the feature called um, Contain Database in SQL Server, where you can actually have a user and then connect directly to that database. Um, but that's uh, not the norm. Normally, have this login and, and database, or login for the server, and then the user for the database. So there's a little distinction there uh, between the, the two. But with um, again, with contained databases and pluggable databases, now you can actually connect same way uh, as SQL Server. So you can kind of log into the uh, contained database and get to your pluggable databases, and then you have a user account also for those yeah. um, user databases as well. And we are actually going to talk about um, 
contained databases. Right. We'll, we'll talk about con uh, contained databases in, in another video. Yep. And then finally, you have this notion of linked server. So linked server uh, in SQL Server allows you to connect to outside data sources, um, such as another SQL Server, an Oracle Server, basically anything you can get an OLEDB connection to that you have a provider for, you can go ahead and connect with the linked server. A database link works very similar to that. There are a lot of other similar similarities that we don't list here, uh, things like uh, you have um, uh, this notion of tables. Tables. Tables, indexes, stored procedures, and things like that. <laughs> and so let's uh, kind of take a look at, um, in this next slide here, uh, kind of the, again, the similarities on how they match up uh, between an Oracle instance and a SQL Server instance. So on, on the Oracle side, your system uh, table space is the master database in SQL Server. You have this notion of sysog table space uh, for having resources in your Oracle database, and in SQL Server it's called a resource database. Now the resource database is a system database that you can't get to, it's used internally by SQL Server. In terms of the temporary table spaces, there's in Oracle you have this table space group which has a set of data files in there. And with SQL Server, you have multiple things that kind of uh, relate to this temporary table space, mainly the tempdb, um, which handles um, um, operations that uh, outside the database in a, in a global uh, space. You have the model database, uh, which is similar to uh, Oracle, the model database. Seed database? I Seed think. database, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has the structure and everything like that that um, are associated when you create a database that are based off the model database. And then you have MSDB and SQL Server, which is um, a keeps track of your backups and agent jobs and things like that for keeping track of um, uh, system operations as well. There's really no uh, equivalent of a big file table space uh, in SQL Server other than um, you can have your large objects stored in a file group um, for your system. Or you can use the file stream. And you can use file stream too. And a file stream, we don't call it out here. This is a way to actually uh, link to tables on the operating system to be able to uh, interact with them with the SQL Server instance. And then at the user database level, there's a lot of similarities here, but the user database is the thing that kind of contains the data files, the index files, and your log files all into a, um, one notion. And then with uh, again, prior to 12C, you had separate spaces for your user index table spaces, the undo and redo logs. Now, uh, we'll talk a little bit about logs in another video, um, but the log in SQL Server combines the operations in Oracle for the undo and redo logs. So you only have one in SQL Server, whereas in Oracle you have the, the two that you need to look at. Okay, so the concepts of table spaces, file groups, data files, uh, transaction logs, uh, it's pretty much the same on both sides? Yeah, it's pretty much the same on both sides. Uh, the, the thing here is, again, you want to minimize um, heavy loads on the disk subsystem. Mm. And the whole idea of, of the file groups and table spaces is to split up data files so that you're not always hitting on everything and mm. making hotspots. And so you're always trying to figure out how do I eliminate my hotspots by moving uh, my data between the system. So that's... so. Um, I would assume that if you are an Oracle DBA and you're used to um, kind of identifying the bottlenecks related to um, file I.O. And, and things like that, so the principles of you know removing those bottlenecks are pretty much the same? Yeah, the principles of removing those are pretty much the same. We have a nice video on performance tuning that talks about how to remove those bottlenecks. Um, and so there are different tools that you can use to help identify those. Awesome. So, yeah, so... Uh, to take a look back at uh, comparison of the schema and data structures, again, the similarities um, between the two, um, two servers are very apparent here. Tables and tables. Tables have columns. Columns have data types that are associated with it and constraints. 
Uh, you have indexes that are designed to optimize performance uh, for queries. They work the same way. Uh, there's, uh, we've got another video that talk, goes into depth about the index structures. Again, the views create view. Very similar synonyms to be able to provide a, an abstract on your column names or, or table names and view names so that uh, you can move things around very easily. You have that notion there. Uh, sequences. Um, Work very similar now between Oracle and SQL Server. Um, the SQL, uh, the instant, uh, sequences were introduced in 2012, um, and, uh, and they are pretty frequently used in Oracle environments. Yeah, right? they're used a lot in the Oracle yeah. environment, and they're, um, you know, SQL Server before that had identity and uh, sequences mm -hmm. are a very nice way to be able to programmatically assign IDs, multiple IDs, uh, the way you want them. Um, Oracle procedures are those things that are basically a chunk of code that represents um, a unit of functionality that you're going to want to interact with. Uh, in SQL Server, it's called stored procedure. And stored procedure is the primary um, programmable unit there that's uh, written in Transact SQL. Functions, uh, there's a notion of being able to have a function that you can call that returns a result that you can use uh, in a query. Um, packages are a way in Oracle, again, to encapsulate a bunch of program modules um, or procedures and functions. They can be written in Oracle SQL, they can be written in Java, um, and um, there is no real equivalent to packages in SQL Server. However, there's a tool called the SQL Server Migration Assistant. If you're wanting to look at how to um, move the, those Oracle packages over to SQL Server that'll actually split them out um, and move them into stored procedures and provide a, a, an abstraction layer on top of it. Um, your queues and streams um, are represented by the service broker queues. Um, you have an object type, uh, which maps to basically a user-defined type. And user-defined types have improved uh, over the release of SQL Server that can now include um, you know, types with multiple columns in it, a table type, and things like that to, to help um, uh, in your programming. And then, likewise, Oracle has this notion of uh, XML capabilities in there. Um, and I didn't have on the slide as well, there's also JSON uh, in Oracle as well. And SQL Server has the XML and JSON um, objects that uh, allow you to extend to other platforms. So um, Oracle DBAs typically um, want to monitor and diagnose their instances using um, data dictionary views and, and so on. So yeah. how, do, how does that compare to SQL Server? Yeah, so with um, SQL Server and Oracle, both have this notion of this diagnostic um, views and procedures. And what this allows you to do is go in, for example, and see what kind of wait stats are happening. And in SQL Server, there's a, um, a view that's available called uh, sysdm underscore exec underscore uh, session underscore wait stats. And in Oracle, you have your V dollar sign view and so there you'd use V dollar sign session wait class. Um, and likewise, there's a similar kind of thing on query execution plans. Um, and so you'll find um, a lot of similarities through. You'll wanna go through um, the DMVs as the first thing as an Oracle DBA and see the similarities there and uh, um, read the books online and, and there's a lot of great uh, content out there to help understand those. We also have another video that will go into the DMVs in a little more detail on how they're broken out. Okay, so this was quite a very nice overview of um, the similarities, the basic essential things, um, similarities be between Oracle and SQL Server. Um, if you want to go through some resources, so we have lots of information available online. Right, yep, so mm. check out these resources online, and that's it. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Thanks.